Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We need to get into what in the world is happening here in our markets today. Another very bloody day on Wall Street, but it's starting to look better for your small caps. AMC stock included is down 1.45% today. In the grand scope of things, that is actually a fantastic day for AMC stock. Considering the NASDAQ is down big time. The NASDAQ currently is down about two and a quarter percent following yesterday's two and a half percent decline you're down huge within the last just couple of days or so we got some data this morning that was not exactly uh great i guess you could say it looks like the markets were pricing it in so we're having an interesting effect today on the bonds the big story recently has been the bonds and yields are actually coming down a little bit today based on hotter economic data than expected. Maybe there's a little bit of a fear move happening today. We're going to get into it. Now, on the Ortex data, AMC is seeing some costs to borrow fees that are increasing. And there's some news about this Beyonce film. Big story with AMC is going to be around earnings and what kind of update we get as far as future dilution. I think those are the things that are really going to drive uh, AMC stock from here. Again, keep in mind, we're no longer seeing this court proceeding just hanging over our head. So we will have the ability to move more now than we did previously on other earning seasons or other periods of time, guys. So we're going to go ahead and get into all of this information and much more. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So first things first, the Nazi NASDAQ, nasty NASDAQ, maybe we should call it, down 2.21% today. Yesterday, you had meta earnings, not exactly great, or last night, essentially, down about 5%. The numbers were good themselves. There, there were some comments along the same lines as what Snapchat said. Advertisers kind of stopped advertising once the is Israel crisis started. Uh, so that's driving Meta down about 5%. Tesla's down 3%. Microsoft's down almost 4%. Microsoft was the big winner yesterday. That I mean, if Microsoft was also down yesterday, it would have been over a 3% down move on on the nasty nasdaq could have been more than that google down about three percent following yesterday's almost 10 percent decline it's been a rough two days here for google mcdougall apple is down 3.10 percent so it's also been a rough time uh, for apple recently apple is going to report earnings next week and that's going to be one of the biggest catalysts we have for next week for sure if if apple does any thing close to what Google does, yeah, uh, we're in a little bit of trouble for our market. So let's go ahead and get into what happened today. So we had your economic data come out. Now, your economic data that came out today was GDP, obviously, that was something we were looking forward to. The expectation was 4.3%. You came in at 4.9%. So I mean, hotter than expectations. This probably should have caused a rise in yields today. Yields are actually falling. We'll talk about that more in just a second. Durable goods orders month over month came in at 4.7%. The estimate was 1.7%. The economy is apparently red hot, firing on all cylinders. Again, this should have caused yields to actually move higher, but it did not have that effect. If you look at TLT, TLT is rocketing higher right now, up 1.31%. If you look at your long duration yields, your 30 year treasury yield, that is down about nine basis points today. Your 10 year treasury yield is down almost 11 basis points today. You are seeing the wildest moves ever in bonds. You're probably not gonna get a more volatile bond market for a long time besides what we're getting right now. And 10-year treasury yields now at 4.84%. You are just at 5%. So this is good, especially for your small cap stocks. Your small cap stocks are really the only winners here. And they're not winners by a lot, but comparing that to the NASDAQ, 
definitely. Russell 2000 is slightly green today. NASDAQ, again, down over 2%. S&P down 1.25%. Dow is down almost 1%. If you take a look at the VIX, the VIX is up 7.63%. You're starting to get a lot more fear here on Wall Street. And yeah, you're probably going to get some more fear from here. So today and after hours, you have Amazon that's going to report earnings. Enphase, Intel, Ford, Chipotle, Dexcom, Skechers, United States Steel, Capital One, and Vail. If Amazon has bad earnings, you're going to continue on this downside trajectory as we have seen recently the last couple of days. I, I will tell you though, since the markets have fallen so much the last two days, Amazon was not exactly a great stock in the last couple of days. The, the, the bar is lower here. So, um, you know, a, a, a miss is still going to be bad for the stock, but it might not be a 10% down move bad. It might be a 2 or 3% down move bad if they miss on earnings. Obviously, it depends on the scale of, of earnings and exactly what happens. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see for that actual report. But hopefully there's a little bit more cushion here um, as of now. I, I'm not exactly super excited on the markets, at least until we get through Apple earnings and we get this incursion from Israel into the Gaza Strip. Once that happens, you might actually get a rally in the markets because we've feared this for so long. Investors have feared this and it's finally coming to pass. And maybe we don't see an escalation from Hezbollah or from Iran a after that. If you do, then yeah, we're probably going to see an even bigger problem for the markets. But if nothing else happens, markets will get over that situation pretty quickly and we can put it behind us. Now, a little bit of good news for these small cap stocks. You are right now seeing one of the worst periods for small caps that you have seen in small cap history. So, on the bottom down here is the number of days since the last 52-week high. You're going on 500 days as of right now. Back during the internet bubble, you were less than 600 days before a new 52-week high. The global financial crisis, you were about 600 days until you hit a new all-time high or 52-week high. And now you're about 500 days. You're pretty far off of a 52-week high for the small caps. So it's probably going to take some time here. It's, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But you're getting closer to, you know, get, getting to just a historical uh, suppressed period for small caps. And this could really help out AMC stock as well. As you can see, the small caps are doing a little bit better today obviously a lot better today than the broader markets and i think that comes down to you know what we've already shared here on the channel right your s&p 500 valuations are way higher than what you're seeing for um your small caps right and normally that is not the case normally you don't see that actually happening okay let's go ahead and, and save this image See if we can uh, bring up the other image. That's not it. That's not what we were looking for. I think it's this one. No, not that one. Let's see. Maybe it's this one. This one. Here we have it. So S&P 500 forward PEs as 17.5. Your small caps, your green and your blue lines, your S&P 600, S&P 400 are way lower, way under the S&P 500 valuations. This will change eventually. Normally, your blue and green lines are higher than your red line, higher than your S&P uh, 500 PE multiples. It hasn't been for a while. So really, what's holding up the S&P 500 uh, PE multiples are really the big tech stocks. You're seeing the big tech stocks giving up now. This was as of October 20th, so the PE multiples more so probably down about here, 17, uh, maybe a little bit under 17 as of right now. 
and your other, you know, your your green and your blue lines would be curling up just a little bit if this was a more accurate chart. But you get the idea. Your S and P 500, really, your tech stocks, they need to come down here. Once they come down here, then you can flush out and get a rise for the broader markets. Because let's be honest, I mean. You're just you're not going to see a healthy market. You're not going to see a healthy rise in everything until you get that flush out of big tech. And that's happening right now, this earnings season. So I would say that's actually a bullish thing um, for AMC stock. Now, take a look at this news. Renaissance, a film by Beyonce, launches globally December 1st. International tickets will be available starting November 9th for theaters in Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, South Africa and the Caribbean. Says a film by Beyonce chronicles the artist's intention and hard work as creative as creative and producer. The film follows Beyonce's process in mastering her craft to execute the 56 performance, 39 city, record-breaking Renaissance World Tour, and opens in movie theaters all over the world beginning on December 1st. And AMC's partnering with this. They are the distributor as well for this film. So AMC's going to bring in more money than normal based on people going to see this film. So AMC is going to get a cut of of all of it. That's exactly, you know, what kind of situation you want for AMC. And I'm sure they will elaborate more on what kind of money they made from the Beyonce film or presumed what they're going to make from the Beyonce film, as well as really the Taylor Swift film. And that could help out earnings quite a bit. And that's what I'm hoping for. We'll see. Wall Street currently is expecting around 30 cents of a loss for EPS. If the loss comes in much lower than that, well, AMC's probably going to rocket higher coming after earnings. Now, if we take a look at the Ortex data over here, you got a short score of 53, $121.5 million worth of short positions on AMC, 6.62% estimated short interest of free flow, free flow out on loan at 8.07%, shares out on loan about 16 million, days to cover 0.84, cost to borrow 1.23, and utilization of 38.25. I just bring up these numbers. Keep in mind, Take it with a grain of salt. These numbers are not true. Live short interest of free flow at 6.63%. That's obviously false. That's obviously not true. But again, yeah, it's just what the numbers we have right now. If you take a look at the cost of borrow max, that is at 14.39%. So uh, that is higher than what you've seen yesterday. Yesterday's number was about 2%. We'll see. Sometimes you do, you do get these just like glitched out numbers for a brief period of time they, they they will look higher than they are but i would imagine they're probably even higher than 14 percent if you were to try to actively take on a short position in amc now the interesting flow sentiment one order totaling sixty one point eight four thousand dollars with a positive order value of one hundred percent. Taking a look at the Stocko Tracker data for this week, you have twelve thousand calls currently in the money, eighty six thousand calls out the money in the money puts at nine thousand out the money puts at about thirty four thousand. So there's a lot more calls than puts. I will tell you right now, markets are pretty oversold just in general if you look at the rsi on the daily on the s&p or the nasdaq you're sitting at almost 30 it wouldn't surprise me to get a broader bounce in the markets before we do head down lower so that could be an interesting setup for amc heading into tomorrow if you do get that bounce tomorrow that's going to obviously be uh Good for AMC, probably even better for the small caps themselves, guys. So that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.